Hi, my name is Alex Toker, and I'm a professor of pathology um, and chief of the division of signal transduction at the Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center and Harvard Medical School in Boston. Hi, uh, my name is Maria Mancini. Uh, I was a fellow in the Toker Lab and the first author uh, of the publication. The Toker Laboratory has for about 20 years been studying uh, tumor progression with a particular emphasis on breast cancer and with a particular focus on a signal transduction pathway that is very frequently deregulated um, in most human tumors, both solid tumors and, and um, hematological malignancies. And specifically, the PS3 kinase and AKT signaling pathway has garnered much attention in the context of uh, tumor progression uh, because of wide-ranging mutations that deregulate the pathway and, uh, uh, and elicit uh, transformation and tumor progression. There is therefore significant interest, um, especially in the pharmaceutical field, to develop small molecule inhibitors for therapeutic intervention for patients that harbor mutations in this pathway. Many of the mutations that exist in this pathway have been well characterized. However, one specific mutation that was identified about 10 years ago in the AKT uh, serine 3 in protein kinase, known as E17K, um, is less well understood. And so a few years ago, my laboratory uh, undertook a study to evaluate the uh, specific function of the E17K AKT1 mutation, which occurs with a frequency of approximately 6 to 10 percent across all molecular subtypes of breast cancer. This mutation has been studied extensively with respect to its oncogenic capacity using in vitro models. However, in vivo mouse models of this uh, recurring somatic mutation, um, had not been uh, generated or studied in any detail. And so we undertook a study to generate a transgenic mouse that harbors um, AKT1 E17K mutation in the mouse mammary epithelium and to evaluate the consequences for mammary tumor genesis. So our uh, main purpose, uh, as Dr. Toker mentioned, um, in generating this uh, AKT1 E17K transgenic mouse uh, was to really ascertain whether this mutation would be uh, on its own sufficient for transforming the mammary epithelial cells uh, in, in, a vi in vivo. And one of the one of the things we had considered when we were generating this animal is we wanted it also to be uh, useful in the field for other, um, you know, cellular subtypes and other applications. And so what we did was we made it not only um, regulated by tetracycline, so the transgene can be turned off and on, but we also made it so that it could be combined with different uh, tissue-specific promoters so that you could study the role of the transgene in, um, in other tissue or cellular um, subtypes. We first uh, examined the role of the transgene in the mammary epithelial compartment of uh, virgin female mice to see if um, in that steady state it would be sufficient for transformation of the mammary epithelium. And after a year's time, um, we did not see any evidence of this transformation. But what we did notice was the mammary gland um, uh, became hyperplastic. And so uh, that really sort of cascaded into a, essentially a bunch of follow-up questions where we wanted to understand, you know, what was really going on mechanistically um, in this tissue. So the, the next question that we wanted to understand was uh, what was the role of this um, in a situation of uh, multiple rounds of pregnancy. Um, we understand that this mutation is associated with um, estrogen receptor positive breast cancers and so we wanted to understand the role of this transgene gene in a situation where you know there would be a lot of hormone signaling in the in the mouse and what we determined was that even after multiple rounds of pregnancy this transgene still um, was not going to um, be transformative in the mammary gland so we we did not observe any tumors um, in animals that had uh, undergone multiple rounds of pregnancy. Furthermore, when we added estrogen as a supplement um, to these animals, it still was not sufficient uh, for transformation. Uh, based on previous work where uh, AKT expression, sustained expression in in vivo models had been uh, placed onto the background of a HER2 amplification, 
the literature had showed that the overexpression of AKT1 had accelerated tumor genesis. And so we wanted to see if it would recapitulate that phenotype with this more physiologic mutation. And so to that end, we combined our uh, AKT1E17K transgenic mouse in the overexpressed in the specifically in the mammary gland. Uh, we combined that on the background of a her overexpressing HER2 mouse model also in the mammary gland. And what we saw was initially surprising, and that was that these mice actually did not develop any mammary tumors at all. And so, uh, in the end, what we, uh, after doing further analysis, what we ascertained is that the uh, AKT1E17K um, actually participates in you know, negative regulation of receptor tyrosine kinase signaling, which in turn actually downregulates um, the signaling through the amplified HER2. The broader implications of this study, in addition to having generated the very first transgenic mouse model of a somatic mutation of AKT, um, are that um, feedback regulation of the AKT pathway regulates receptor tyrosine kinase levels and therefore dampens the signal through, in this case, HER2, to decelerate tumorigenesis, which was, as Dr. Mancini pointed out, a rather surprising finding. Another implication of this study is why do patients actually harbor this mutation if this mutation, as the transgenic mouse model indicated, do not progress to frank carcinoma, why are their patients, upwards of 10% of the breast cancer population, actually harbor this mutation? And one of the most uh, logical um, uh, reasons for this might be that this mutation will, will not exist um, in isolation in the breast cancer population. It is highly likely that this mutation arises in the context of other hits or other somatic mutations, such as p53 loss and other driver mutations that, that um, initiate tumorigenesis and by which AKT1E17K contributes to. Whether this is indeed um, the situation rem remains to be demonstrated, but this mouse model should provide a very useful tool to test these hypotheses. It will also provide a useful tool for testing therapeutic possibilities in this, in this pathway. As I mentioned earlier, there are numerous small molecule inhibitors that are currently under clinical evaluation for therapeutic benefit for patients that harbor mutations in the PS3 kinase and AKT pathway. And we hope that this mouse model will provide a, use, provide a useful tool for both monotherapy and combination therapies that target one or more nodes in this pathway.